Hey, how's it going, everybody? This is Joey Galvez, one half of your host of Explain Yourself, and I want to let you guys know about a really cool book from our friend of the show, Eli Shockey. This one is called The Grey Luck, and it's a story where magic is a commodity. Potions are sold at corner stores. Orcs and dwarves earn a living in cubicles, not on the battlefields. But there are those who resist the house's magic laws, branded a criminal and forced to live as a want for hire. There is a spell slinger they call the Greylock. Check this one out. You guys can pre-order issue three right now with code JAN241939. And make sure you guys are heading over to your favorite LCS and letting them know that you want Greylock number three and maybe pick up the first two issues. Uh, you could do that at the Scout web store. So make sure you guys are grabbing the Greylock number three, JAN241939 at previewsworld.com. Okay, everybody, welcome to the latest episode of All Too Real 2. My name is Michael E. Cullen II, and with me, as always, is... Matthew the Falcon. Sharon might be the power broker. Us. All right. I always love it when your middle name has some kind of speculation in it. Oh, I know. It's cool. (laughs) Well, they always speculated about me, so kind of makes sense like is you know is matt really human you know whatever so kind of makes sense i mean i'm pretty sure that you're either an alien or a robot it's either one of those or a wizard um Mm -hmm. you know aliens robots or wizards so yes or maybe you're all three that's possible um aliens have robots i mean i guess they could you're an alien robot wizard yeah, you know, I'm an alien, but I'm also built by, so I'm a robot built by aliens, therefore it makes me an alien, and because my creators are aliens, and then they taught me to, you know, sorcery, so technically I'm yes. all three. Yeah. That, that, that sounds amazing. Mm-hmm. So, today on the show, <laughs> we are covering... The fifth episode of the Disney Plus television series, The Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> um, episode five was entitled Truth. And um, it was uh, directed by uh, Perry Scoglin and uh, written by uh, Dallin Musson. Um, so, uh, first reactions, Matt, what'd you think of this episode? Uh, I was, um, like, I guess thoroughly impressed, really, um, you know, the length of the episode for one thing, they really give us, you know, our money's worth with the show, you know, and, um, and, uh, I liked how it, um, it, the pacing was really nice, you know, it wasn't, it felt, even though it was the longest episode so far, it didn't really feel like it was really that long, you know, and so, this this one really, really wasn't as full of action as the other one was, but uh, I just kind of liked how it, it flowed, you know, it just, uh, it, it was just really enjoyable to watch, it wasn't as suspenseful as the last one was, but, um, yeah, uh, 
but yeah, that was my initial reaction. Was um, it just it was very plus too a lot. It was um, what's the word? There was a lot of uh, different um, landscapes, I guess. It wasn't all taking place in one place, you know. So that was kind of cool. Yeah, I mean, it was. I I really liked it. I mean, I think it was really the the John Walker of it all was kind of cool. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it was. It's really good. Um, I just, uh, I mean, yeah, like you said, it wasn't as intense. There wasn't as much action, but it didn't need to have action. I mean, you don't need action in every one of these things. Even though some fanboys are like, oh, there's no action. I can't like it. Um, But, uh, (laughs) (laughs) you know, it's too woke. Um, (laughs) Oh, God. They're Tom Walker's the real Captain America, man. Yeah, okay. They're Um, talking too much. I don't like it when people talk. I just want them to fight. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, um, you know, you you you, you get woke, you go broke. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so funny. That was that was really clever. Yep, I came up with that on my own. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So, anyways, um, I liked it a lot. I think it. it I like. I like the Isaiah Bradley scenes. I like all of I mean it was it was really cool. Um seeing uh Bucky and Sam kind of becoming, you know, better friends was cool too, you know. Yeah. Um the uh the cameo in the episode was kinda cool. Was unexpected, but you know, it was cool. Um <laughs> not as like big of a cameo as everybody was expecting or anything, but it's still a very important character. Um, yeah. And a very great actress. I mean, 11 times Emmy Award winning actress. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, we'll get into that when we get to it. Um, so, anyways, uh, I asked uh, some of our fans what they thought of it. And uh, Chris Tiefel said, I will let you know when I watch it, and if I see any spoilers in this thread, I will track you down and give you such a noogie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't do spoilers, so... Yeah. Uh, uh, ever since, um, what was it? Uh, end, end game when someone told you oh, yeah. that someone died in the movie? Like, yeah. Yeah, that was bullshit. Um, so we don't, we don't do that here. <clears throat> and uh, William Toth wrote, I can't wait for the final episode. Everything with John Walker was great, along with the the scene Falcon had with somebody. <laughs> <laughs> he was purposely not spoiling like anything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like that. Mm-hmm. So, um, what, um, what happened in this episode, Matt? Uh, quite a bit. Uh, but like I said, you know, it was it was paced out really good. Uh, so it starts off with uh, John Walker is running away from the crime scene, like immediately after he killed that guy, and he's running off to some kind of like you know where like empty warehouse building or something like that, and he's kind of like <clears throat> experiencing like like immediate PTSD essentially, like he's hearing. Lamar's voice, like Kevin, sort of audio hallucinations. Um, he's like, he kind of breaks down and cries. He's like trying to take in the, the whole gravity of the situation. And for like a split second, it does seem like he's kind of, you know, realizing what he did and that, you know, he, he did something wrong. But then he does that weird head cock thing that he does, just how Zemo does. And he like turns, it's almost like, I figured it out, like, when he does that, it's almost like he's, like, turning off, like, a part of his mind, and it's just sort of like, what they call that, compartmentalizing or something like that, and Compart- he's compartmentalization. like, alright, time to yeah. go back to work, yeah, yeah. alright, time to go to work, and then he just gets up, and immediately he's, like, into, like, like complete the mission mode, he's like, oh, you guys should go see a medic, you know, you don't look so good, and 
you know, he, he's talking to them like they're a team still. Like, like they got to finish the mission. It's like, they're like, no, dude, like, we're not here for that. It's like, you need to give up the shield now. And then he gets all pissed off about that. Because, again, it was kind of like, he, he kind of had the same attitude towards Sam just as Carly did where, you know, like, they feel like Sam's trying to sort of disarm them by talking to them and then they feel like they've been tricked by him, you know what I mean? And yeah, it's not what Sam's doing, no. He's not trying to trick anyone. He's just trying to talk to them so they can sort of put their, I guess in a sense, put their guard down, but they interpret that as trickery, whereas for him, he's actually just trying to get through to them so they can talk as like a person, not as like a soldier who's on the mission or whatever, you know? Um, I mean, that's how I took it. And then they got into this huge fight, which is pretty cool. Um, uh, yeah, it was very it was very similar to like fights within that were in Civil War and um, you know and uh, and in Winter Soldier. Yeah, because I mean it yeah, was I like sim- similar to the fights with like uh, Cap and and Bucky and uh, and Iron Man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, with the shield stuff. Yeah, kinda, like yeah, yeah. It is very interesting. Um, like I was saying, I was just watching Civil War just before I got on the phone here, and uh, and I was realizing too that like this sort of like buddy cop thing between Sam and Bucky actually kind of goes back to Civil War even because like they always end up like finding themselves together all the time, like falling down, like Spider Man like tied them up with a bunch of his web, and Sam's like. Like, I hate you. <laughs> you yeah. Know, stuff like that, you know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that's, you know, that's kind of interesting. But um, so what happens in the fights? I kind of don't remember all the details, but I know it was pretty intense and cool. I mean, basically, at at one point, um, John Walker basically destroys the Falcon Wings, which is important. Um, he, uh, they they eventually, you know, take him down. So I mean, it's it's kind of you know. I mean, I'm sure that you know, people obviously saw this when if they if they're listening to this. So, <laughs> but um, I mean, it, it it's hard to go beat by beat, you know, try to remember it all. Um, but but basically, in the end, um, they they basically subdue um, Walker, you know, knock him out and. Uh, then we, um, they, they broke his arm at the end. Somehow, even though he's like a, you know, super soldier. <laughs> um, and then they take the shield. Um, after that, um, we, uh, we move on to a scene, um, basically, what, um, we have a scene with uh, with Torres, and uh, actually, was that before or after that? I'm trying to remember. Um, anyway, so no. <laughs> well, Torres was right after the fight with with John Walker. Yeah, basically, uh, mm-hmm. there's um, he he asks you know what what's up with the wings you know being broken and stuff and. Uh, and uh, Sam leaves uh, leaves the wings with him. Basically, says keep them. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, which is uh, uh, <laughs> which is interesting because in the comics, Torres becomes Falcon. So. <laughs> right. I don't know. I'm still wondering though if in the show, if Torres is secretly a flag smasher because every time he talks about them, it's like he he almost has like this sort of like admiration for them like like i don't know how to describe it like, yeah well, i know what you like, mean he's like, she's really really good at like being underground like it's like uh, he's talking like almost like he's a follower of hers you know what i mean <laughs> or like or he's trying to talk like to be objective but like i mean yeah. it could just be that he admires her sure yeah doesn't necessarily admire her actions as much as her her goal her philosophy, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, who knows, though, you know. Um, 
we'll have to wait until next week to see where this goes if if it does right. anything if it goes anywhere. Um, the uh, then we have we have a scene where um, Bucky finds Zemo in Sokovia in front of a, a memorial to the Sokovian, um, you know, the people that died in the died during Civil War. And, uh, or not that Civil War, in um, Age of Ultron. Isn't that correct? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's from Age of Ultron, yeah. Yeah, yeah um, he's, uh, and, and I, I really like how the, uh, the statue is like a statue of a family. Mm-hmm. You know, like it's, because uh, that kind of uh, represents what we've lost, you know, and what people in Sokovia have lost. I mean, like, kind of is representative of, like, Wanda's family or um, Zemo's family himself, you know, that he lost. You know what I mean? Right, yeah. Yeah. Um, the, uh, they, uh, they have this, like, really cool scene where you think that uh, Bucky's gonna shoot him. He pulls a trigger on a gun at his head. But there's no bullets in the gun, so, um, and then uh, he hands them over to the Dora Milaje, um, and uh, at one point t- towards the end, um, he says uh, he says to the Dora Milaje as they're leaving, um, he says to Io, he's like, "There's one other favor I need from you." Um, and I think we're going to find out next week what that is. I'm pretty sure we kind of can guess, but, uh, we'll, we'll talk about that in speculation. Um, (laughs) the, uh, um, we have, uh, basically Zemo's then, you know, basically sent over to them and they said that they're going to send him to the raft, which is a, uh, a prison in the, in the, uh, comics that we have yet to see in the movies. Um. Then we have a scene after that, um, which I think is one of the coolest scenes in the whole show, where uh, John Walker is being um, dishonorably discharged and uh, stripped of his role as Captain America um, for killing that guy. Um, it's just I think. I think uh, Wyatt Russell's performance in that scene is amazing. He uh, goes oh, off yeah. and he he's, he's got this like you know he's just pissed and he's got this whole thing where it's like you created me basically you know like <laughs> which I think it's true I mean they basically <laughs> he's not wrong you know <laughs> no he says that he's lived his whole life by their mandates he's you know they trained him to be a certain way to do a certain thing and he. He did it, and now they're just, you know, just going to strip him away of everything just because, you know, he, quote, went too far or whatever, and then, uh, which he did, but it's just like, at the same time, it's like, <clears throat> like, when you, I mean, I don't know if it's like this anymore, but, like, I know from people who actually have been in the military, and, like, they've they've openly stated like when they talk to me about it that like when they first like train you like they literally will try to like take any sort of like sense of individual out of you like yeah. you're not a person anymore you're a soldier and like and like this person would have no reason to tell me this like to make a point like there no, no reason to lie about this you know so um and like they would do all kinds of like hazing way methods to like sort of um basically harden you so that like you can you know you can work under pressure so like they'll you know they'll, they'll try to like get under your skin to like sort of like humiliate you some some ways so that you you know you don't lose focus so it's like yeah in a lot of ways you know those quote mandates what what made him a really good soldier and um uh, and to be able to you know not buckle under pressure uh because it's kind of like if you can't handle your sergeant you know hazing you during training, you know, you're not going to be able to handle an enemy firing upon you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I 
I mean, I, those, those, I've, yeah. I've seen it several times. I mean, there's been people I've known who came out of the military completely different people than when they went in. Right. You know, um, it's just, it's, it's interesting, you know, how they basically, it, it's like they create a blank slate and they almost become like an android as opposed to a thing. I mean, as a human, you know, it's like, yeah. Um, and, and then you build up your personhood after that fact, kind of. Yeah. Then you're 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 still a changed person, though. A lot of times, you, you basically start out as a blank slate, and you almost become a new guy. You know. Right. Um, yeah. The uh, and it's an interesting. You know, it's like I, I I was thinking about this, and I'm like, it's like uh, it's like what do you blame? I mean, for his actions, do you blame him or do you blame the people that trained him? Um, it, it's kind of like how with like, do you blame Frankenstein? Or do you blame the Frankenstein's monster that he created? Right. You know, it's like... Well, you blame yeah. both, mm-hmm. both, but at the same time, it's that, you know, our military, the, mm-hmm. at least at least on book, on paper, the, the laws are clear that you, you don't... You're not supposed to kill someone who's surrendered. Um, yeah. You, you know what I mean? Especially someone who's unarmed. Yeah. I guess you could, even, you could have an argument of like, oh, well, they said they surrendered, but they had a gun behind her back or whatever but like if someone's unarmed and they're surrendering there's no reason to kill that person like you know what i mean and, yeah i mean it and and, and and it also applies to our like things like with like cops as well you know like we've got many situations in recent memory sadly you know mm-hmm. with you know like george floyd's death and other things where people are murdered by cops um for no reason really you know when they should have just been yeah. taken into custody for, you know, regardless of what crime they may or may not have committed, you know, it's like you you can't, you know, somebody trying to pass off a twenty dollar bill, or even if somebody murdered somebody, you don't have the right to murder them, you know. Right. Yeah. It's not, you know, pe- people try to try to justify the actions of a of somebody that's in the military or that's a police officer based on the actions of the person that they murdered. <clears throat> but that still doesn't mean that you were right in killing another human being. <clears throat> right. I mean, that's, you know, we've moved far beyond, you know, at least in theory, far beyond the, the, old, the old laws of, you know, eye for an eye. Oh, mm-hmm. you cut someone's eye out. We're gonna cut your eye out. You, you cut someone's hand off. We're gonna cut your hand off. Like, no, there's there's more civilized way of doing that stuff now. I mean, so it's like if you catch a serial killer, does that mean then you gotta go and kill all the friends and family of that person to you know tally up the number of people that they killed? Like, oh, he's yeah. killed fifty people, so now we gotta go kill. 50 people this guy knows. You know what I mean? And, so, and even in that I situation, mean, like, it doesn't mean it's, you know, within your right, you know, that there's a, there's a, there's a justice system, whether it be a military justice system or, you know, the civilian justice system that'll take care of, like, you know, you capture Ted Bundy, but you don't have the right to kill him right when you capture him, you know? Right. It's, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but there's a lot of people, though, that they like that because their emotions run high and that's what they, they think, you know, they want to make those decisions when they're in the heat of their emotions rather than their rational mind. And that's dangerous when you, when you put violence in the mix because violence is inherently done in the heat of the moment when it's right, when it's emotional. Um, that's why like nowadays, like when they execute people, it's usually, you know, very like orchestrated, like organized, you know, and stuff like that. It's not like in a heat of the moment, I've got to take a shield and bash this guy's head in, you know, or something yeah. like that. And even then, I mean, I'm not saying necessarily it's a good thing, but like, it's like violence inherently is something that like happens when you, you know, you got that adrenaline flowing, you got like, um, <clears throat> you know, like in the show, they kind of have like that pounding sound or whatever. Well, that's kind of like you ever notice like when you've been severely angry before, it almost feels like you can't hear as well. Oh like, yeah, as your blood's literally pumping into like your ears and shit, and you you lip. So it's like you hear that your heart beat harder. 
you know? Yeah, yeah. You dance harder, and then you just become, like, like, so focused on, like, a singular point, everything else kind of, your surroundings doesn't really exist anymore, really, for the most part. So I can actually believe that when he did that, he, he may have not even noticed that there was other people around watching them, like, you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, but, uh, yeah, he, he, you know, he's basically telling them off, like, you know, you trained me to be this way, you know, I did what you told me to do, and now, you know, and it, the thing is, too, he wasn't even trying to get his sentence turned around, he just wanted to speak his mind, that's what started the whole argument, yeah. like, I understand, you know, I'm not trying to get appeal the decision, you know? well, well, he does still think he is Captain America, though, you know? Yeah, in his mind, he is. Yeah, um, and, I mean, and it, it is kind of, here's the thing that, you know, it's like, he's lying to himself, too, throughout it, you know, to convince himself that he's in the right. Um, even though, I mean, the thing is, is like, he, he was trained to be this way, but I think because of his training to be that way, he's basically now convinced that anything he does is correct, you know, like, he's above the law. Yeah. And, uh... It's because it's it's like the whole thing. I mean, my thing too with this is it's like okay, he he killed a dude, but he didn't go to jail for it. <laughs> he was just no. He he was just basically fired, you know. And that's what that's what's been happening with cops and stuff, you know. Like they'll kill somebody and they don't go to jail or anything; they're just fired. <clears throat> right. Which well, doesn't like seem right. Week, <laughs> yeah, it doesn't. Well, it's, it's like what I said last week, last time we were talking about this, is that, like, <clears throat> when when you have the right to kill, then that means you have more responsibilities than the people who don't have the right to kill. So it's not, so you don't you don't just get extra rights and then you, you're above everyone else. Those rights come with extra responsibilities. And that's what's supposed to even balance it out supposed to, you know, yeah. <laughs> balance it out. A lot of times it doesn't, but like, and that, that would mean that whole point is that's what it's supposed to be like. It's like, all right, well, you got this little extra thing going on here, but we're not just going to let you, you know, run around, you know, you got this anchor now, you know, um, well, anchor, it's a bad analogy, but whatever. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, um, so, so then anyways, after that scene, um, after he uh, receives an other than honorable honorable discharge, and is uh, stripped of his role as Captain America, he's out in the he's out in the hallway on a bench with his wife, and he's a- approached by this woman, played by our cameo in this episode, Julia Louis Dreyfus, um, you know Emmy Award winning actress that we know from Veep and Seinfeld and Arrested Development and <laughs> the New Adventures of the Old Christine and all these different shows, you know, that she was in. Yeah. Um, yeah, she's one of my favorite comedic actresses of all time. So, um, she, uh, reveals herself to be the Contessa Valentina Allegra de Fontaine. <laughs> One of the longest names I've ever said in my life. Anyways, um, <laughs> she uh, basically is trying to say that she'll, like, you know, help him out if he needs it. And uh, in the comics, she's a very important character who um, is known as Madame Hydra. And uh, she is a... Uh, Basically, an espionage agent who uh, was at one time in the books um, a lover of Nick Fury, <laughs> and among other things. And uh, she was she was a she was a, a shield agent who turned out to be a Hydra agent. Mm. So we'll see where this takes it, and I think she's going to be important here in the future. Um, from what I've read, she's going to be in the Black Widow movie. Oh, okay. So, that'll, 
Yeah, because and that was and, and and so this this cameo would have made more sense now if Black Widow would have came out when it did, when it was supposed to. Right. But it's not yeah. coming out, you know, until June or something. Yeah. June, June or July or whatever. It's supposed July. Yeah. yeah. Um, and you know, but it was supposed to come out, you know, last year. So, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, we would have known who the character was if that movie would have came out when it was supposed to. But this is still kind of cool because you're introduced to her and you don't know who she is, and it kind of makes it more of a mystery, you know. Yeah, it's it's more um, chronological now. Um, yeah, as opposed to. Retroactive, I guess. Uh, well, well, kind of chronological because I mean, Black Widow's supposed to be taking place in the past, so. Oh, that's right. Yeah, it's supposed to take place. Yeah. Where, where, after Civil War, is it or? No, I think it's. I don't know when it is, but it's early mm-hmm. on in her life, I think. Oh, okay. So yeah, it's. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. I can't wait to see that movie though. So. Um, I know, seriously. Ho- hopefully, we can see it in the theaters. Hopefully. Well, we'll um, be able to. I mean, I'm getting my uh, second shot soon, so we'll be good, you know. It's, yeah, so Within right, hours, cool. actually, so as we <laughs> record this. So, um, <laughs> um, the, uh, so, so she leaves, she, she, uh, she leaves him a card, and it's like white on one side and black on the other and completely blank. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like you know yeah. so anyway so like what's that supposed to mean you know I just thought right. I, I liked his response he's like looking at it he's like it's blank <laughs> she, she was such a quirky person too like yeah like, she did not sound like you know uh, you know super serious you know whatever yeah like, <clears throat> which is perfect for Julia Louis-Dreyfus you know yeah um so She's gonna basically turn him into like a Hydra agent, I guess, or something, or possibly. Yeah, we'll, we'll have to see where this goes next week. Um. So. Uh, anyways, um, Sam ends up returning home. Um. Do you want to take a break, actually, and then we'll talk more about this? Yeah, sure. I saw it. Okay, we'll be right back, folks. What is Gen X? What is the silent generation? What do generations have in common? Hi, I'm Trish the Dish from the Gen X Voice Podcast, and I invite you to listen to conversations I have with folks from different generations, backgrounds, beliefs, and experiences in an attempt to see what connects rather than divides us. Even though Gen X has been called slackers, Karens, or not mentioned at all in some cases, we are the bridge generation, so I feel compelled to do my part to destroy ageism by bringing all these voices together. And, as a bonus, each guest gets to answer some 80s questions at the end of each show. So download and listen to Gen X Voice today on Apple, Spotify, Amazon, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And let's see how much we have in common after all. Hi, this is Catherine, host of a new fashion podcast, The Real Fashion School Dropout. Join me as I interview guests every week in the fashion and beauty space and we gossip on all things fashion and beauty and even get into some personal stories of their journey in the industry. You can find us on Apple, Spotify, pretty much wherever you get your podcast. Hope to see you there. And we are back. So, Matthew, my good friend, Mm -hmm. what happens next in this very, very special episode of Falcon and the Winter Soldier? Special episode. Um, Well, uh, Sam goes, you know, he goes back home uh, after, you know, all this stuff's going on. 
and uh, he's uh, you know going to fix up the boat or whatever. He's kind of resigned resigned to the idea that they're going to sell it, but then his nephews say that their mom said that they can't sell it because it's too broken down and no one wants to buy it. So <clears throat> he kind of you know, it's like, why didn't you tell me that, whatever? And she's like, oh, well, you know, it's, you had that sad puppy dog in the rain look on your face when you came home last night. <laughs> you know, stuff like that. <laughs> and, uh, and then, you know, they get the, he gets the idea, it's like, well, because, you know, because their parents used to help out everyone in, like, the neighborhood, like, all over the place, and for, you know, like, decades, and He's like, well, you know, maybe, maybe we should call in some of those favors, you know, <laughs> after all these years, so then I got like basically the entire town to help out with like fixing the boats and donating like parts and you know things like that. And they had like this huge like crate of something like like a bunch of pallets with like that ceram wrap stuff around it. And then like how are we how are we gonna get this off the truck? And then like Bucky just shows up and just lives it all you know by himself. Yeah. <laughs> and then they're like, what? And then like. <laughs> I don't think they knew who he was. You know, like they knew, they knew he's Falcon. Well, some of them know he's Falcon. Not all of them. Really, yeah. Right? But some of them know. And um, and then uh, Bucky, he like puts down this like cool crate, and he's like, you know, just need you to sign off on it, and then I'll, I'll leave. You know, which I'm not sure why. Did they get into a fight or something like that? I don't remember that. But he was at like he wasn't welcome there or something. Like no, he's that. just and, kind of he's. It's their whole dynamic. Okay. Yeah. And and then the okay, crate yeah, the crate he has is like you know he says it's from the Wakandans. Yeah. So I'm pretty like, sure that's what cool. the that's what the favor he was asking of of Io in the scene where he gave uh, Zemo to her. Yeah, yeah, it has to be. And it's like this cool looking case, and of course, it's kind of like the whole Pulp Fiction thing. Like they never show you what's in it, you know. And, uh, <laughs> <clears throat> and um, you know, Sam lets them. Oh, they 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 got a cool um, uh, cute meet between Bucky and and Sarah, Sam's sister, and you know, Sam's looking kind of like rumbling, like you know, like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, don't, <laughs> like you know, my my sister, yeah, you know, don't flirt with my sister, <laughs> yeah, you know, which he tells thing. him later. <laughs> I know because because well, he, he did it twice, and it's like yeah. It, uh, it's like, come on, and then, uh, <laughs> it's like you already, you know, you already went on a date with like the, you know, the cute Asian woman, you know, that the, your neighbor basically set up for you, you know, yeah. and then you skipped out of that date. It's like apparently you're not good at dating, you know. So, like, <laughs> <laughs> and, um, so he helps out with like the boat, though. It's kind of. That, that, that's what I like about this episode is like it wasn't all action. Like they had like cool scenes of they're just working on the boat together. Yeah, and, uh, nice little you know, montages of you yeah. know, you know the the whole the whole we can get this done. You know we can you know we can do it. Yeah, exactly. Sure. Yeah, we could do this. You know they play like this cool like music in the background, mm -hmm. and uh, at one point they're like working on something that they're not supposed to be working on. And <laughs> Sarah catches them. And he's like. That's not what I told you to do, or something like yeah. that. Yeah, <laughs> and she's like off by <laughs> like yeah. I appreciate you. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. they they you know, and and, and it's pretty cool to see you know the whole like George Bailey sort of scene where the whole town comes to help the help the family that helped us, you know, sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, for freaking decades yeah you better help start helping out <laughs> yeah <laughs> um, and then, uh, at, one, at one point sam visits isaiah bradley again by himself this time and that's a really cool scene you want to talk about oh yeah that? that was before this i think yeah oh, what? that's right yeah 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 he goes to baltimore and he and he visits isaiah bradley and uh bradley basically you know, first he sees um, Bradley's grandson, which we need to talk about a little bit. His grandson in the comic books becomes a superhero as well, who's a young Avenger. Yeah. Um, forgot what his name was. Patriot. Patriot. Yeah, there we go. Um, I knew it was one of those, <laughs> one of those American words. Um, anyways, um, <laughs> um the uh. 
the um yeah he so 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 that that he's he's like where's your grandfather you know to him and then he he's in the back you know working in the garden or whatever so he goes back there and he's he's basically wanting to show him the shield and basically give it to him because he wants him to be Captain America <laughs> um and uh and Bradley basically tells him that he doesn't believe that a black man can ever be Captain America. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, we need your blonde-haired, blue-eyed, you know, true American sort of hero, you know. Um, and it tells him about how he was experimented on for years. Um, you know, and, and, and declared dead. Huh. Um... And his uh, his girlfriend or wife thought he was dead for years, you know, and never, you know, knew. And he he never got these letters from her that they were trying to that she was trying to send to him when he was in jail. Yeah. And they were experimenting on him. He show, he lifts up his shirt and he shows all these scars of everything that they did. They were trying to figure out why the serum worked on him and not other people and <laughs> all this other stuff. And um, so you know, it's. It was such an emotional scene. Carl Lum- Lumbly, uh, just brilliant actor. Man, he's so good. Mm-hmm. I was crying watching that scene. You know, he was just like so s- sad. Yeah. But I mean, he he's got he's got his old old school ways of believing that you know n- a black man can't be Captain America. But right. Sam, in his mind, you know, is basically thinking you know things are changing. You know, things are getting better. They might not be fully, but, you know, they are, you know, in certain ways. And he thinks he can be, you know. But, of course, they, you know, you're going woke, and so you're going to go broke, man. Yeah, man. <clears throat> you know, it's like one of those things where it's like, you know, like he said, you know, he was like Sam when he was Sam's age. Yeah, he, had, he was, like, idealistic and, you know, had, you know, hope and... you know, with positive ideas and stuff, you know, in his mind and like, you know, and uh, thought the best of things, you know, is very optimistic. That was the word I was right. looking for. Um, the, <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, so, but yeah, basically though, he, he leaves, you know, Bradley and Bradley doesn't want to, doesn't want to be Captain America, doesn't want to be declared alive again. He just basically wants to live it, the rest of his life dead <laughs> you know yeah yeah pretty much yeah so um right. anyways yeah. and, and then we go to the t- then we go to the stuff that we talked about before with our with our uh fixing up the boat montages and um so later on um sam basically comes to the conclusion that he he does deserve to be captain america and so, uh, Bucky and him, uh, train with a shield and, uh, agree to move on from their pasts and work together, basically. You know, they, they come to the conclusion that they, you know, basically they kind of realize they're friends, you know, and that yeah. they're, that they're kind of like brothers in a way, you know, because they share this bond of being, you know, both being Steve's best friend, you know? <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, so, uh, we see a scene, um, at one point too, where Carly and, uh, some of the flag smashers come back to their, uh, their little, uh, headquarters and realize that the, uh, the GRC has, uh, evacuated everybody from there and they are trying to, relocate everybody yeah and uh there's a there's a vote that's going to be happening at the grc conference um called the 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 patch act which is a act that decides that they're going to send basically they're going to send these people back to their to where they're where they came from Hmm. and not the places that they were relocated to during the blip you know, so sounds a lot like deportation, but with a fancier word. 
sounds a lot like the thing where the where that uh that Trump was doing with the whole uh, yeah with, with the whole dreamers and everything yeah <clears throat> yeah and it's almost like they don't want to leave they like where they're living now and then they're not going to have a choice to leave hmm. and it's like kind of like hey <clears throat> we didn't have a choice to be where we are right but we've gotten used to it. Right. But now we're going to go back to somewhere that we don't even like, or maybe have never been before. Right, and we got jobs here, we got homes here. Yeah, but you know. So anyway, yeah, they're going to vote on whether or not to do this to twenty million people. Yeah, Can you imagine that mm-hmm. twenty million. Sometimes some countries, that's the entire population of an entire country. Yeah. So you can imagine, like you know, like let's say you have a country like England or I'm not sure, whatever country. Imagine all of those people in that country leaving it uh, for another place or scattered throughout the rest of the world. Yeah. So that's why the Flag Smashers exist, is literally, is because uh, they don't want to leave. Um, <clears throat> they like it where they're at, or at the very least, they, you know, they're familiar with, you know, where they live now, and, you know, Anyway, so yeah, that's the reason why the flag smashers exist in the first place because of this bullshit, the GRC, you know, repatriation, and, you know, this whole propaganda. They show all, all these smiling people on these posters, and oh, we're 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 getting people back to normal. Like anytime anyone says back to normal, you should immediately be suspicious right there, because um, that phrase almost always means something bad (laughs) it doesn't necessarily mean back to the normal you want it's back to the normal they want you know it's not you know it's it's never in the in in the in the well-being of the people it's in the well-being of the people with money um right yeah or power or both um yeah the uh so we have the scene in like central park um well actually um First, before that, we have a we have a scene with with uh, Sharon Sharon Carter. Oh yeah, where she uh, is on the phone with uh, with Batrock, who we uh, who we saw in the first episode, who was the guy that was trying to the the French guy French speaking speaking guy who was trying to uh, take the American soldier that uh, that Sam stopped from stopped him from taking in the first episode. Mm-hmm. Um, he. Uh, she hires him, pays him double from last time, so that kind of implies she was the one that hired him to take the soldier. Hmm. Which, still, you know, <laughs> I don't yeah. know what Carter's endgame is here. Um, and uh, so, so she she hired him, and then he, he appears in in uh, in Central Park in New York with uh, with Carly and some of the other flag smashers. And he has like a a uh, little little briefcase full of uh, weapons and stuff, and they have a plan. They're going to uh, basically attack the GRC conference, mm-hmm. um, which ends up happening. Um, there's some people inside there that are saying uh, "one world, one people." To each other, and they're right. part of part of the situation. Um, Very similar to Hail Hydra, kind of. You know? Yeah. <clears throat> um. And the funny thing is, it's like that. That's like what I believe. I believe we are one world, one people. So it's like, <laughs> right? It's so hard. It's so conflicting. And here's the thing: so like, I wasn't like all cards on the table. I was not really. <clears throat> mad at them at the beginning, like, even when they were, like, robbing banks and shit like that, because, like, if you study history and revolutions, almost all revolutions begin where they rob banks to pay for their operations. Yeah. I mean, I'm pretty sure even the American Revolution did that at some point during the early days. You know, it's, it's the whole Robin Hood them. aspect of things, you know? Yeah. So, like, the Soviet Union did the same thing, the Bolshevik. Stalin would literally rob banks. He was really good at it, too. He robbed banks, take the money, and give it to the them to buy weapons so they could fight the the SARS army. So this shit happens all the time. So like I was not like, okay, they they robbed the bank, whatever, fine. Yeah. People, look at there there's there's insurance for that shit. Look, the people get their money back, whatever. But then when she 
bombed that building. I'm like, oh, okay, all right, that's you know, <laughs> that's gone too far. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, it's the same thing with like uh, with like Walker, like where you're you're at the point where you 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 think your goal you're you're you're, you're trying to you have a goal, but you end up killing people and then you kind of cross the line on your goal. You know, it's like, yeah, you know, you, your goal isn't necessarily, you know, it's like you've got the by, by any means necessary sort of thing that you're going, going through, which is not necessarily always a good way to go about it. You know? Yeah. You gotta say, you know, how about this? You gotta say by, by many means necessary. Yeah. You still have to have a line. Uh, you, know? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> you know, you shouldn't be killing people. That's probably pretty much the line. Um, yeah. unless it's in self-defense, you know, that's a different story, but, um, yeah, the, uh, but anyways, they, they end up attacking it. there. There's a, there's this whole, uh, scene, the, the, the room at the GRC conference is kind of reminds me of like, uh, the, the war room in, um, Dr. Strangelove, you know, it, it kind of is very similar set. Um, it's, uh. It's very, very interesting, you know, it's, it's, it's like that, or like the movie Failsafe or something, you know, one of those, uh, one of those war room type of movies. Um, and, uh, you've got them all arguing whether they should, you know, sign this patch act or not, and then, and then the scene happens where basically all the electricity in the place goes kind of wanky, and, uh, or wonky, (laughs) or whatever you want to call it, and, um, yeah, so, uh, that happens, and then, um, And then we have a, a scene towards the end where uh, Sam opens up the the case, and we don't see you know you get the whole Pulp Fiction sort of thing where you don't see what's in it. <laughs> and then we have the credits, and then we have a mid credit scene for the yes. first time, which uh, we see Walker building a new shield from scrap metal and his war <laughs> medals. Yeah. So that's interesting. <laughs> yeah, which you know, it's not vibranium, so it's not. No, know, it's not going to be as strong. But and, yeah. um, it, and what's the other thing too is that it's not. They, I mean, I know it's built out of vibranium, but the whole thing where the shield like almost acts as a boomerang, like that, also means it was made kind of special. I mean, like, yeah, you know what I mean, like. And you wouldn't be able to get that from any kind of regular shield, like. Yeah, but I mean, he's he's more building it for the symbol, and yeah. uh, and and I mean, he has super strength, so it's not like he necessarily needs a super strength shield as well. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know. Anyways, so, uh, that's that's what happens there. Yeah. Did I miss anything, or I think we got it all? I think I think we got. Uh... I think it's most of it. Um, yeah, because yeah, we got Zemo. Yeah, Zemo got taken, taken away by the. I forgot their name. The um, Dora Milaje. Yeah. Yeah, Dora Milaje. Um, and they're gonna go to the raft, which I, I read that's kind of like almost like an Argus type facility, like a DC, where it's like yeah. surrounded by water. I think. Or something oh, like that's that. cool. I think. I don't know. I think, but um. That would make sense, and it's so called the raft. That it would probably, be surrounded by water. Right, the raft. Yeah. So he's probably not going to be able to get out of there, you know, easily. Um, <clears throat> and um, yeah, so trying to think. We got yeah, I think we got yeah, everything. We got everything. Yeah, um, we did. So uh, you want to take a break here, Matt, and then we can come back and we'll uh, we'll talk about some speculation and some uh, trivia here. Yeah, sure. Okay, we'll be right back. It's the ninja from the Ask the Angry Ninja Show saying, come listen to the show. We got the ninja wife to give you your movie reviews. We got the conscript to give you the ninja news. And we got the battle to talk about your sports. And as always, it is the Ask the Angry Ninja Show. So ask me a question. We'll give you the ninja knowledge you need for your ninja life. Search for us anywhere you get your podcast from. Just search for the Ask the Angry Ninja Show and enjoy the show. And we all back. Back. We all back. Yes, we are. 
How are you? That's the way the cookie crumbles. That's the way the cookie crumbles. <laughs> um, how are you, Matthew? I'm okay. That's the way it is. Is that what Walter Cronkite used that's to say? That's the way it is. Yes. That's the way it is. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, um, <laughs> anyways, back to my normal voice. Um, here's some uh, trivia from the internet movie Database. <laughs> database. Database. The database. The ace of base. <laughs> um, anyways, the, uh... <laughs> the ace. <laughs> good, good band. Yes. <laughs> I saw the sign. And it opened up my eyes. I saw the sign. Okay, um, the, anyways, so... <laughs> um, alright. The Contessa Val- Valentina Allegra de Fontaine, played by Julia Louis-Dreyfus, in the comics was a high-level S.H.I.E.L.D. operative and sometimes lover of Nick Fury. She was also a high-level Hydra agent known as Madame Hydra. The uh, black-and-white calling card may be an homage to her appearance in the comics in which she had black hair with a white streak. This is the first episode of the series to have a mid credit scene. Um, Julia Louis-Dreyfus' cameos in this episode at, as Valentina Allegro de, de Fontaine an espionage agent who first appeared in Strange Tales, number 159. In um, talking about the cameo leading up to this episode, a producer said he wants Fontaine to team up with Thor in the future of the MCU. In an article published in Vanity Fair during the episode, it was revealed Louis Dreyfus was supposed to make her first appearance as uh, DeFontaine in Black Widow, as we spoke before. Um, It's interesting, too, I was reading somewhere that... um, that the there was a art there was an interview and years ago a few years ago with uh some of the writers from uh veep and they all said that uh they thought that um that julia louis dreyfus would be an excellent villain in the mcu <laughs> and then it came true so that's interesting so <laughs> that's yeah it's interesting yeah <laughs> so um <laughs> Which, I mean, it, it is, a, it, and, and they did talk about how this was, like, a grounded character, and it was kind of a shocking cameo of somebody that's, you know, an A-list actor, you know, that we, we know in, in Hollywood and uh, stuff like that. And, I mean, it, it, it is true. I mean, it's somebody that you wouldn't expect in the MCU. Because when you kind of think about right, uh, yeah. think about it, you don't really think Julia Louis-Dreyfus as a MCU character. You know, it's not, you know, when you watch Seinfeld, you don't think, hey... Elaine would be a great MCU actress. Yeah, yeah, yeah like one of the most powerful Hydra agents yes. of all time. <laughs> yeah. You know, and plus, too, anything, anything would have been better than the whole Paul Bettany trickery. But yeah, uh, you know. yeah, I would have been satisfied with her on that show as opposed to <laughs> yeah. Um, so, um, do you have any speculation as to how this is going to end next week? Uh <clears throat> you know, I wish that, they, you know, is, is there going to be a season two, or is this going to be like a WandaVision thing, where it's just one season? I think as it stands now, it's just a one season, but it could, you know, you never know. Okay. Or or these characters could end up in other shows, <laughs> I mean, you know. Right. Because I guess my only, spe- my only issue, I think, is, you know, like... If they're gonna try to wrap up this whole John Walker thing, and it seems like it's just gotten started, you know, you know what I mean. Just with one episode, it seems kind of like a maybe not a great pacing issue when it comes to that storyline. But like, yeah, I don't know. We'll, we'll see what happens with him. But I think I mean, he could he could a few he could he could appear in, in future properties. You know, like you know, right? Future movies or TV series, is, you know. <clears throat> yeah, I think like. There's definitely going to be a fight between you know, he's going to end up becoming like U.S. agent or or whatever or or an agent of Hydra who knows where he's going to you know he still thinks you know jilted he thinks he's still a Captain America and you know Sam well that's one thing we to... forgot to talk about in the episode is he did visit uh, Lamar's parents oh yeah that's and right, and yeah. straight up lied to them and said that he killed the person that killed um yeah killed their because son. The dad... The dad even asked him, was like, was that guy, you know, the one who killed, you know, Lamar? And he's like, yeah. yes. Like, hmm. okay, wow. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know. It seemed like, also, too, it seemed like 
um, their daughter, Lamar's sister, seemed like she didn't really believe him. Yeah, like, the way she was looking at him was kind of. Like, she may have seen. She may have seen the video, and they didn't because they're like older and stuff. Maybe they don't have. You know, well, 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 seeing the video didn't mean anything because nobody saw oh, yeah. nobody saw who actually killed Lamar. There well, was right, no there was he, no video. He did, say, yeah. he did say where where is she though? So I yeah. don't know if they were recording at that point or not though. So that's true. Um, yeah, they could have picked up right when he started beating them though. So <clears throat> you know, but but even yeah, him asking where is she doesn't necessarily mean that. He was asking for the person that killed Lamar. He might just be asking where Carly is, you know. Yeah, the the leader. Yeah. yeah. Um. So anyway, anyway, yeah, he lied and just said, "Oh yeah, sure, he's the one or whatever." And um, sorry, and you know, blah blah blah. And, you know, they're like, "Lamar, we're so proud of you," and you know that, like, you know, and all this kind of shit. And, you know, just makes them like feel like you know two feet tall or two inches tall or whatever. Yeah. You know, like, you know, he used to talk to us all the time about how, you know, he was so proud to, you know, work with you and all this kind of stuff. I'm like, Jesus Christ. And, uh, <laughs> and, um, I just pile it in. Which on. really sucks. Yeah. I, I, I want, yeah. I really wanted Battlestar to be, you know, more in the show. Like, you know. Yeah. But, and I mean, I like that know. actor too. I mean, yeah. I, uh, yeah, he was good. But, I guess he needed to die, you know, he needed something to happen. I was kind of hoping still that he wasn't dead and that uh, that we'd have to deal with the aftermath of the fact that he killed somebody and Lamar wasn't dead. Exactly. But, like, yeah. oh, you did this, you know, in my name, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and now I can't even, like, look at you the same now or whatever type of thing. Yeah, because he probably would have been like that because he was always the one trying to calm him down. and Yeah. Almost like a spouse in a way. Well, his wife's kind of the same way, where she's like, "All right, you need to like, focus, yeah." And like, like, but I mean, the main thing is too now that he doesn't have Battlestar at his side, he's basically lost his Jiminy Cricket, and right. he has it's no like, no conscience at all. You know, he's not. You know, it's like so. So who knows what's going to happen next week? Where he's going to be? You know, a uh, a terror without any kind of reasoning. You know. <clears throat> Yeah, like, no, like, just totally untethered to any kind of sense of morality. Uh, so anyway, yeah, I think there's got, definitely going to be a huge battle. He might even, who knows, even have some allies on his side that we don't even see yet, you know, at this point. Um, and, you know, he might even actually kill Carly if they don't get there first, you know. <laughs> and it's almost like, who knows, I mean, he might even have to, t- <laughs> who knows, maybe, maybe maybe Sam and Bucky will have to team up with him. Right. To yeah, take to take no on other. Carly. You know, it's it's hard to say. And I mean, I, I hope, I hope, I really hope this isn't the end for him or the end for Carly, because I like these characters. But a lot of these shows are supposed to be self-contained and not really affect the movies. So, mm, okay. is what they've said, is what Kevin Feige has said, so we'll see what happens, and I mean, maybe they'll, I, I really just hope they don't kill them both off. Yeah. Or either one of them, for that matter. So you can, you know, bring them back in the future if need be, you know. So is there supposed to be a movie that's, like, for example, like, mm-hmm. WandaVision was supposed to be, like, before Doctor Strange 2, is there, like, a movie that's similar to... The show, or I don't know. Like, I mean, I'm I'm sure there's going to be things in the future, like another Avengers movie, or some, or they might, maybe they'll, maybe they'll have a new Captain America movie. Okay, you know, with with Sam as Captain America, that'll feature Bucky <clears throat> as well. Yeah, you know? oh, yeah, yeah. Right. The other thing we forgot to talk about too is is that when Sam started training with the Shield after he, him and Bucky were talking about how like you know that. Steve probably didn't think about the implications yeah. about like what it would be like for you know a black man. I I, I think Steve would though because he seemed pretty conscientious about that kind of thing. But like, yeah. uh, but anyway, like that's what Bucky said. That yeah, and I maybe, mean he does have a point though. I mean Steve might not have thought about this as well, you know, too fully, uh, you know, because you know he wasn't a black man, so he doesn't really know what the situation's like. You know, right? And came from a different time as well, so maybe it's he got has a more like simplistic 
view of like morality and stuff like that or you know like or also seeing all the progress in the world but not realizing that even though there is a lot of progress when it comes to racism we still do have a lot to do to solve right. you know issues when it comes to you know bigotry in general you know right i mean exactly like steve fight you know like fell asleep or not fell asleep but got trapped in the ice and you know back then people were just openly saying you know the n-word and you know, frowning upon, like, people having, like, interracial relationships, and he wakes up, like, oh, all this stuff's better now, because, you know, I, uh, you know, <laughs> I don't hear that word as much, and, yeah, you know, so, yeah, I can totally see that kind of, like, somewhat of a rose-colored, you know, glasses type of, like, progress, you know, type of thing, yeah. like, or whatever. So, so then Sam starts, you know, he's training with the shield, like, and that scared me that one time it looked like it was about, about to take its head off. Um, yeah. You know. Well, that's the thing. I mean, just think about how scary that is to him, you know? <laughs> it's like... <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's a good thing that he's getting a handle on it, you know, literally and, phys- and, and figuratively. Yeah. yeah. Um. So, yeah. Anyways, um, anything else before we uh, wrap things up here, Matt? Uh, sh- no, not really. Okay. So, I mean... uh. If you're listening to this episode and you haven't listened to any of our other uh, episodes about, you know, we, we cover a lot of cool things in, in this show, um, not just Falcon and Winter Soldier. Um, we have uh, our latest episode is an interview with Will McLaughlin, the uh, actor from Superstore, Parks and Recreation, Wrecked, and a bunch of other um, movies and TV shows. It was, it was an amazing interview. He was a great guy. Um, I really liked talking to him. Um, so make sure you check that episode out. We got some other, you know, recent episodes, an interview with, uh, Scott Barber, the co-director of, uh, the Orange Years, the, uh, Nickelodeon, um, documentary. And, mm-hmm. uh, we, we have a recent episode, uh, where we, uh, we, we talked about that 80s show. You know, so, you know, so things like that, you know, we, we got, we got some fun ones. We got some interviews, different things like that. You know, please subscribe to the show, you know, share it with your friends, you know, so, you know, they can check it out too. Um, hoping to grow the audience here. Um, you know, and, and if you want to help us out, feel free to give us a five star review on, um, the Apple podcast, whatever they're calling it this week. And, um, <laughs> I mean, honestly, they changed the name of the thing a few times since we've been, oh, yeah. since we've been broadcasting. So wow. it's like, yeah. Um, so, so yeah, just give, give us that or wherever else you can, you know, and, and share the show. Like I said, that's, that's a good way to do it. You know, check out our Patreon. You can, you know, help, uh, help support the show monetarily. Um, and, uh, you know, you can get some cool, uh, Merch on our on our uh, T Public store as well, you know. Get some, get an all too real two T shirt, you know. Woo! You'd enjoy that, you know. People you can wear it around and be like, "I listen to this cool podcast, and you don't. Maybe you should start listening to it <laughs> because yeah. because Matt and Mike are awesome, and uh, yeah. you know stuff like that. Just say that to everybody you meet. Yeah, you know everyone. Yeah. I don't care what your situation is, you know. You could be in a therapy session. Tell it to your therapist. Yeah. You could, uh... Yeah. You could be uh, confessing to a priest. Tell him about it, you know. <laughs> your, your sin is that you listen to too much all too real. <laughs> too... <laughs> well, it's, it's not a sin. Good. It's not. It's never a sin to listen to too much all too real, too. Terrible. I know. <laughs> It's just too much of a temptation, Father. You, you gotta check it out. Yeah. No, it's terrible. That's <laughs> no. Just be like, be like, forgive me, Father, for I've sinned, and then you're gonna be like, yeah. Well, so I, uh, you know, I yelled at my mom the other day, and I, uh, I, you know, I, 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 I thought, you know, in pure thoughts about my neighbor, um, and uh, sure. and um, before I go. Uh, Father, I think you should listen to All Too Real 2 podcast. It's a great show. And, um, you know, you'll enjoy it. Especially their, their, their dive into, you know, direct video sequels such as uh, Tooth Fairy 2. I think you'll really enjoy that, Father. 
Yeah. That sounds legit, right? Yeah. Okay. Anyways, um, we should probably go. Um, you know, make sure uh, you're doing all the good things that you can do, folks. You know, wear a mask, wear a condom. Mm. <laughs> Get a vaccine, you know. For anything. I mean, I don't care what the vaccine's for. Vaccines are good, people. Just don't listen Don't listen to vaccine. those anti-vaxxers. Just get any kind of vaccine, doesn't matter what it is. <laughs> Even if you don't need it, just go in and be like, you know what? Tetanus or... <laughs> I need a typhoid vaccine yeah. right now. I need the vaccine for tuberculosis. I need a polio like, vaccine right now, doctor. No. Like that episode <laughs> of Superstore where... Glenn's talking about traveling where they are going to need so many shots. <laughs> I'm all excited about it. Oh, good times. <laughs> Anyways, um, until next time, folks. Bye bye Thanks for listening to All Too Real 2 Podcast, a Cullen Park production. Produced and edited by Michael E. Cullen II. Music by Matthew Haas. Subscribe and share the show. Visit us at CullenPark.com. Yeah.